because in America, it is what it is. Me having a conversation by myself and trying to change America by myself. In 2019, Jay-Z became one of the newest members of the Billionaire Club. And not only was it iconic, but it was also momentous since he was the first rapper to obtain that status. And he was one of the seven black people on the list of billionaires. The event was commemorated by Forbes with a joint interview with fellow billionaire Warren Buffett, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in America, and the CEO and owner of Berkshire Hathaway. The title of the first billionaire rapper was raised for a contest at first by Dr. Dre, another veteran hip-hop rapper prominent during the late 90s to early 2000s. In 2015, he claimed the title, but upon closer inspection of all his investments and assets, his worth was estimated short of a billion. But back to Jay-Z real quick. Let's not forget that his roots will always be connected to hip-hop. He came out with his breakthrough title, Reasonable Doubt, back in 1996 in his own independent record named Rockefeller Records, which was established a year before with Damon Dame Dash and Karen Biggs Burke. Although he's a billionaire now, he came from humble beginnings wherein he grew up in one of Brooklyn's housing projects, the Marcy Houses, which was pretty notorious for its violence and drug deals. Jay-Z himself shared through his songs and interviews how he sold cocaine for money. The burden of poverty isn't just that you don't always have the things you need, Jay-Z shared with NPR in an interview in 2010. It's the feeling of being embarrassed every day for your life, and you do anything to lift that burden. He made his TV debut on MTV's Yo! MTV Raps back in 1989 at the age of 19, and by 1990, he officially adopted the name Jay-Z, which was a tribute to his mentor Jazz O. By establishing his own record label, Rockefeller Records, he made his debut album Reasonable Doubt, and from there, he only had his eyes looking forward. He became one of the most popular rappers throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, garnishing income as he went by. With a net worth as big as his, many folks wonder what he actually does to spend all that money on. For today's topic, we're going to be discussing the rapper and businessman's billionaire lifestyle, which pretty much involves investing in clothing, sports, real estate, and art. Founding the clothing company Rockaware. In 1999, he established his own clothing company and named it Rockaware. Based in New York, it had annual sales worth $700 million and expanded its name by licensing to sell affordable clothes for kids and juniors, as well as co-branded products with Pro Keds, State Property, and Team Rock. In 2007, they signed R&B singer Clara as the face of the product line for their I Will Not Lose campaign. In 2017, Jay-Z sold the rights to the company to Iconic Brand Group for a whopping $204 million. However, he will retain his stake in the company and will continue to oversee the marketing, licensing, and product development. He established Rock Nation Unified. After selling the rights to Rockaware in 2007, he built Rock Nation Unified, or simply Rock Nation, the following year in 2008, and has offices in New York, London, Nashville, and LA. The company has a multi-year partnership with Live Nation and has services that range from management to music publishing, sports, philanthropy, record labels, and production. Aside from Rock Nation, he also bought a stake in the Brooklyn Nets, which is an American professional basketball team based in New York, for a cool amount of $1 million. His share was actually a shockingly small 0.067%, which is worth about $355,000. But he still does a large part of the branding for the team, and the Nets owner label stuff despite how small his ownership stake was. Jay-Z ended up selling his stakes on the Nets in 2013 and released its sports management division called Rock Nation Sports. A year after establishing this company, he managed to secure several popular athletes such as Kevin Durant and even negotiated with one of the biggest contracts in 2014 involving Robinson Kano, who closed off a deal at $240 million. With this, it's now one of the biggest steps Jay-Z took as entry into the sports business. Another noteworthy tactic he did was kept signing athletes who idolized him both as a rapper and business entrepreneur. His lifestyle in and of itself is an inspiration to young athletes, and that makes him appealing to people as an agent. It's not every day Beyonce's husband, who also hangs out with Barack Obama, knocks at your door. He also managed to sign Skylar Diggins, another accomplished athlete from the WNBA, and gave her a Mercedes upon signing with Rock Nation. He invests in real estate. Jay-Z and Beyonce started dating in the early 2000s, and in 2004, Jay-Z was living lavish 
anonymously in his Tribeca bachelor pad, where he purchased a seventh floor penthouse at 195 Houston Street for $6.85 million. The apartment spanned 8,000 square feet, with an additional 3,000 square feet of terrace space. This was where the couple had their private 40-guest wedding in 2008. A year before their private wedding, Jay-Z rented a three-bedroom penthouse on the 76th floor of the Time Warner Center, which cost $40,000 per month back in 2007. In 2011, it got sold for the amount of $31 million, which made the record of the most expensive record sale in the Time Warner Center. Now, back on to the newlywed Carters. They bought a property in the Millionaire's Bunker in Miami, which consisted of a sprawling seven-bedroom, eight-bath Miami Beach house, which is located at 40 Indian Creek Road. The compound is part of Indian Creek Village, which is an exclusive, insanely expensive island in Miami's Biscayne Bay, and it only houses 35 homes on the island. In 2010, the couple sold this property for $9.3 million, but that's not all, because in 2015, they bought a historic church in the Garden District section of New Orleans, and according to Zillow, the couple bought this property for $2.6 million. But the Carters aren't really done yet with real estate, peeking here and there for the most beautiful and private spaces. In 2012, they rented out a Brighamton estate located at 612 Hainsley Lane for $400,000 in August. This property is now listed up for sale with an asking price of $49.99 million. A little while later, they rented a similar estate but with better accommodations located at 30 Wayne Scott Highway in Wayne Scott, which costs $500,000 a month and has an 11.5 bathroom waterfront palace. In August 2017, they became full fledged Hampton owners when they bought a palace known as the Pond House for $26 million right after giving birth to twins Rumi and Sear. It sits next to a 17-acre nature preserve and is designed by esteemed architect Stanford White, with Jeffrey Cole working as the building's contractor. According to the listing, the current owner rotated the original house 90 degrees so that the historic Triple Height studio room would look west over the pond. And that's not the only extravagant detail. There is hand-milled woodwork throughout the home, and the bathroom's feet feature marble from Verona, Italy. Before that, they bought an $88 million Bel Air mansion with 30,000 square feet of living space, a spa, media room, four outdoor swimming pools, full-size basketball courts, and more in February of that same year. The eight-bedroom home was the most expensive sale of 2017 in all of Los Angeles County, beating out even a new purchase by the music mogul David Jeffen. He's also invested in beverages and transportation. Back when Uber was only available in San Francisco, he made the smart decision of investing in his transportation service and bought a stake for $2 million. And now, Uber has an estimated net worth of $70 million. He's got quite the taste in alcohol, with cognac and champagne to be precise. He introduced the Armand de Brignac, which was popularly known as the Ace of Spades because of its packaging. He debuted his drink in 2006 with the music video of Show Me What You Got. There's also the Cognac de Us, a subgeria of Bacardi, and only produces two products, de Us VSOP and de Us XO. Jay-Z worked with Michael Castiavecchia to bring these products to life, which is made of the Chateau de Cognac in France and has a current net worth of $100 million. He is an avid art collector. Thankful for Jay-Z, his wife also shares his love for passion and art, and the two are quite popular art collectors. In Beyonce's 7-Eleven music video, we can see two art pieces displayed, and fans have quickly identified these as David Hammond's basketball drawing and a car hood wall piece by Richard Prince. In an interview with Howard Stern back in 2010, Jay-Z expressed his thoughts on a Hammond's piece saying, quote, I try to buy things that resonate with me. David Hammond's has made a huge painting with bricks on the bottom, which reminds me of the projects where I came from. Jay-Z also openly expresses admiration for the late neo-expression artist Jean-Michel Baptiste, and often references art and songs. In 2013, it was reported that he purchased a painting by the artist for $4.5 million. The 1982 artwork entitled Mecca was recently sold at a Salbury's auction in Manhattan last week. The orange, white, and black acrylic and oil slick work features the Empire State Building under a trademark basket crown. The New York Post reported that the rapper was the anonymous buyer who snatched up the painting. He even both of it in one of his songs called Picasso Baby, where he sings about a baquette in my kitchen corner. He's also long been a fan of Baquette, who died in 1988 after a heroin overdose and has referenced the late graffiti artist several times in his lyrics. The painting Charles I was the basis for his 2010 song Most Kings, opening with the lyric, inspired by Basquette, my chariot's on fire. Quote, he rapped about it all in detail, says Fab Five Freddy, a contemporary and friend of the late painter. Jay-Z helped educate millions of hip-hop 
K-pop fans mentioning Jean Michel, and today, Forbes estimates that his art collection is worth roughly $70 million. And the takeaway from all this, Jay-Z has served as an inspiration to a lot of people, rising from rags to riches, and has shown no signs of stopping anytime soon. Quote, Jay-Z's journey is the modern-day embodiment of the American dream. Zacho Mallory Greenberg, Forbes editor and author of Empire State of Mind, how Jay-Z went from street corner to corner office, tells Vibe. Quote, his ascent offers an invaluable blueprint and inspiration to the next generation of entrepreneurs. So that's it for today's topic. We hope that you enjoyed today's video, and if you did like it, please click that like button and subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss anything else from us. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.